House Fire podcast. Dave and I will discuss, is Microsoft creating a monopoly and what does all of this mean for the gaming industry as a whole? Coming up right after this. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Crossfire Faith and Gaming, the podcast. So today we've got some really, 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 really big news. Uh, Not a huge news week other than, I guess, one main story. So yeah, we're asking the question today, does Microsoft intend to create the world's biggest gaming monopoly possibly ever? So uh, the news this week comes directly from Microsoft themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, looks like we've got an article that says basically, uh, hey, we're going to buy Activision Blizzard for a couple bucks. Uh, the article I'm reading here says Microsoft to acquire Activision Blizzard to bring the joy and community of gaming to everyone across every device. So Microsoft is indeed buying Activision Blizzard and King uh, software, and they are buying them for a cool $68 billion dollars. Um, makes it crazy when you look at the price tag on things like all of star Wars for 4 billion or all of Marvel for 4 billion or all of Minecraft for 3.4 billion, or even, you know, recently we saw the, what was it? $12 billion, uh, Zenimax Bethesda deal. Um, was that 12 or was that, that was only seven, right? I think lots of, lots of things being acquired, but but 68 billion. Holy cow. So Russ, my question for you this week is uh, number one, uh, what do you think about this deal? And number two, what do you think about the price tag? Um, let's just start with the price tag. Uh, it kind of makes sense. Um, mostly because we're looking at the acquisition of probably the biggest game and biggest annual game in call of duty. Um, just so everybody knows uh, going back to 2000 and let's see, so I got month by month for the last like two years and call of duty almost gets $30 million a month. That's what I'm seeing. Literally October. Hold on, hold on. Say that again. 30, 30 million dollars. Yeah. Oh, month. that's never mind. That's just call of duty mobile. Uh, I'm just looking up call of duty mobile. So that's, that's how much they get per month for call of duty mobile. Uh, Warzone, and this is from uh, 2021, so this is August of this past year. Warzone reportedly makes 5.2 million in revenue per day. Per day, David. Per day. So now we kind of understand why Microsoft paid so much because they're probably going to get that money back maybe in what, three years, two years? Like they'll, they'll make that back and then it'll all be profit from there. Um, what I think we really need to talk about though is the idea of you know, what is Microsoft's goal with this? What is really happening um, in the gaming industry, in the gaming sphere when it comes to this? Uh, it's, it's, it's insane because, you know, that's just Call of Duty, not to mention all the other games. Candy Crush, uh, World of Warcraft, you know, all of the IP that they have. So I look at this two ways. There is good and there's bad. Okay, the good is easy to go off of first, which is one, Microsoft now takes over a very toxic environment that we've seen with Blizzard and Activision and hopefully can turn that around. Great. I'm happy for the Activision and Blizzard employees that are now going to be in a much better spot. That's amazing. Uh, Another good aspect to it, uh, I would say, and and this is something that people have been talking about, is maybe now Microsoft maybe takes some of those um, studios within Activision Blizzard that have been relegated to being Call of Duty map makers and like, you know, just helping out there and actually puts them to use making games again. Um, you know, there's the the studio that did um, the Spyro, the new Spyro game remastered, the Crash Bandicoot series remastered, all that stuff. Maybe we can get them back on games. You know, there's a number of studios that have been just sucked into this behemoth that is Call of Duty and how much money it makes. And all Activision saw was, how can we get the most revenue possible through just Call of Duty and not worry about anything else? Well, now with Microsoft gaining so many studios at once, you have to wonder if this, they're going to put some of them back into uh, actually creating games. Now, the negative, and this is the big one. I think this is what we're going to talk about for most of the podcast today. Uh, is this a bad thing for the industry? And is this potentially leading to a monopoly within the gaming industry? 
my honest answer at this point is yes. And I'm a little bit worried for one reason and one reason alone. Um, this is taking another massive publisher off the market. It has nothing to do with the studios that they acquired. Um, you know, both Sony and Microsoft have been acquiring studios left and right. That's one thing. But acquiring such a massive portfolio of studios all in one shot, on top of that, um, also gaining the massive publisher that is, but uh, you know, Activision, Blizzard, um, and, and honestly, we'll say King Games because they make so much money themselves. But that takes another huge publisher off. With the Zenimax, they took another huge publisher off. So right now, the amount of things that are left out there that are just large publishers is dwindling. And I'm a little bit worried what that will look like in the future. I have a feeling Microsoft's not done. I have a feeling they're going to continue to do these things. And at some point, we could get to the point that, you know, you just have your games over here, your games over here, and that's it. There's no third-party development. And what that looks like for the gaming industry as a whole will probably not be good. I also wonder if this is a little bit of Microsoft's goal. You know, they want to turn into a games as a service company with Game Pass where you pay a subscription, you know, become the Netflix of gaming. Uh, If there is no competition, what is going to stop them from raising the prices of Game Pass, you know, to $50, $60 a month to cover the amount of revenue they're going to lose from selling their actual games? Now, it could also still be fine because they could use Call of Duty and its microtransactions to kind of offset those costs. So, David, what are your thoughts on the monopolization of the gaming industry? Do you think this is it? Do you think this is a bad thing? What are your thoughts on all of this happening? Uh, For one, I am a huge Blizzard fan uh, of their IP, not so much their gaming. Uh, The the company uh, atmosphere, we've talked about that a little bit. Um, Really good uh, episode of our podcast we had with... Uh, our friend Andrew, who uh, from Aspiring Unicorn Games, he kind of talked about game culture and uh, the game development culture and crunch. And, you know, although they don't crunch at his company, but, um, you know, we we had a really good talk about all sorts of stuff. Um, but I think the the weird thing is looking at the list of game companies dwindling. Uh, I mean, I, I saw the Jeff Keighley tweet. Uh, where he said, if you're wondering about the other big game companies that are still around left to be acquired, here's who remains. Uh, and he put the the market caps next to them. And so he said, you know, EA is out there for 38 billion. Take Two uh, Interactive is out there for 18 billion. Nexon for 15 billion. Bandai Namco for 15. Embracer for 10. Netmarble for seven. Uh, Ubisoft for seven. Konami for six. Square Enix for five. Capcom for four. And Sega for 3.6 billion. So, you know, some of these companies you look at and you go, holy cow, you know, you could have, instead of buying Activision Blizzard, you could have had Sega, Capcom, Square Enix, Ubisoft, and uh, it take two, uh, you know, and, and you, you could have saved a couple bucks, you know, or you could have bought EA and take two and Sega. I, I don't know. It's crazy thinking about the numbers. Um, I think there's, there's the benefit of seeing, you know, the consolidation under Game Pass. I think the you know, games as a service is really where uh, Xbox is trying to go, right? The Netflix, they're trying to become the Netflix of games. Um, And I think it'll be interesting to see how games as a service under Xbox eventually pushes things over into the space of like, um, what does that look like for the future of IPs like World of Warcraft? That, you know, the user base has been dwindling. It's kind of been falling off a little bit. Does Microsoft try to reinvent it? and come out with the new Microsoft world of Warcraft or do they just kind of let it die? And then who knows? Um, So overall, I think there's a lot of potential good that could happen there. I think Xbox Microsoft is a good company Uh, overall. I've seen a lot of positive things from them. They are not a toxic environment to my knowledge, at least. Um, But I think also, you know, having diversity in the marketplace is always a positive, right? Having competitors in the marketplace is always a positive. And what happens when there's less competitors and, you know, you see kind of what you've seen with Netflix, uh, no offense, Netflix, but I feel like sometimes you go on Netflix and you're like, man, it feels like there's a million movies on here, but there's really like 20 movies and maybe they're mediocre unless the new stranger things is out. And we just kind of, we're sitting here paying our subscription fees, waiting for the next big thing to drop. So um, I don't know. I also think it's 
interesting with the mobile market. And that's the, this is the thing that I, I think is going to blow all of us out of the water. I remember looking at a chart of uh, projections of where they thought gaming was in terms of PC gaming's market share, console gaming's market share and mobile gaming's market share. And the fact that mobile gaming was going to overtake PC and console by like 2025, if not earlier. Um, So I think the other interesting thing here is to look at things like Call of Duty Mobile or Candy Crush and say, we're making a ton of money on these free games because people are dropping, you know, some of the games that I play, I'm looking at like, oh man, if I want to get the, the package of whatever, so I don't have to wait 24 hours to play again, it's, it's a hundred dollars for those coins. And I'm going a hundred dollars for a free money. I don't know. I don't understand it. Maybe I'm an old man, but it could be that that's where their investment dollars are going is really into that mobile space as well or into project X cloud. Oh, Russ, I cannot hear you. All right. So I'm going to just, <laughs> I'm going to just keep talking while Russ tries to figure out his mic. Uh, good thing we're live and we're recording our podcast. So uh, let's see here. What else in the news? Interesting news. Let me bring this one in. Uh, saw a news article here that the, creator of PlayStation, uh, Ken Kutaragi, criticizes the metaverse and VR headsets. So we talked a little bit last week on our podcast about VR headsets, about the new VR2 that's coming, the PSVR2 that's coming on the way. And uh, Russ and I talked about the specs, our thoughts on VR, our thoughts on the metaverse. And uh, I think Russ is back, but can you hear Russ, me? Russ, you still there? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can okay, hear you. Good. Um, yes. What are your thoughts on on the <clears throat> founder of PlayStation criticizing the metaverse? Uh, I mean, or VR in general. There, there's a reason that Ken Kutaragi is not really involved with a lot of stuff anymore. Um, I, I think you know he's he's kind of out of touch, um, and <laughs> he's just kind of saying something because you know that's just where he's at. Um, he's right now the CEO of the Ascent a robotics company. So he really is not part of the gaming sphere anymore. So I would say, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about what he has to say. Um, what, is, what does that robotics company make? What is their, what is their main project? Uh, does it say in there? Does it say in the article? Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the, the real world with digital. I don't know if I want to read this intelligent robots built with chips <laughs> and centers design to perform human tasks and produce a wide range of products projects digital scenes such as holograms is another of his stuff okay okay not what i thought it was gonna so he be doesn't, but he doesn't like the metaverse because he wants to create the robot verse uh-huh. in real life yeah um no i i think you know this is a non-starter it's just them going after somebody who's you know in the know or they thought in the know but he's been out of the business for quite a while so i wouldn't take much of what he says um you know to heart uh, overall though, you know, I think VR is definitely where we're heading in space as far as this space goes, the gaming sphere and, and honestly the non-gaming sphere, the amount of properties and availability of what you can do with VR headsets just continues to grow. And as it becomes more and more, um, obtainable by normal people, I have a feeling that we will see a lot more people jump into VR in the future, the very near future. So uh, if you haven't already, buy yourself a VR headset and experience it. It's a, it's a great thing to do and a lot of fun to be a part of. So highly recommend grabbing a VR headset and trying it out with your family. Um, the the one thing I wanted to swing back, though, to, to uh, the news about uh, Xbox purchasing Activision. Um, and this can kind of go along with the, the next article, which does talk about Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick. Uh, reporting the step down after everything settles in roughly a year. Uh, That's good news, although he's probably going to end up with a large sum of money to walk away, which is not good because he doesn't deserve it. Uh, But the other thing is Phil Spencer did tweet out this week. This is another question that has been brought up a lot. Uh, He tweeted this out actually a few days ago on January 20th. I had good calls this week with the leaders at Sony. I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony is an important part of our industry and we value our relationship. Now, before, and and a lot of people came out saying, oh, this is it, this is it. They're they're not going to go exclusive. They're just going to publish it. They're going to make money off PlayStation. I don't think that's what this is saying. 
I think this is going to be very similar to the Bethesda act, uh, a- acquisition where Phil Spencer said almost the exact same thing. And what that meant was, for instance, they had a contract before the purchase went through with Sony to have Death Loop as an exclusive on PlayStation 5. Well, Microsoft had to get that through and they had to, um, you know, continue and honor that contract. So I don't think that actually means anything uh, for what's going on. But on the other side of it, too, where he says, I keep our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. I think that's more as far as Warframe goes. Uh, Warzone, sorry. <laughs> uh call of duty Warzone, and you know the the battle royale game the free to play battle royale game similar to what now minecraft has somewhat become where it's still available on playstation that doesn't mean in the future that we won't see exclusive games from activision blizzard including potential next iterations of call of duty down the road being exclusive to pc and xbox so i don't think that really saves much rather than just saying okay phil spencer is fine with what's currently happening no need to panic just yet. Um, another really interesting thing, and I'll need to check it out, Dave. You can comment on what you think of that um, as I find the other quote from Phil Spencer, which is actually a very interesting one that I think we might want to talk about because it may just involve uh, Google Stadia. Oh, Stadia. Stadia. <laughs> I, I just pulled out my Stadia controller the other day and I was looking at it with nostalgia, remembering the times when I was extremely optimistic about the future of stadia which i do still think i think you know i think stadia and luna and everybody's just trying to figure out is this possible you know like i said i might not play it you might not play it but thinking about the the global potential for people especially in a chip shortage uh and people not able to get their hands on physical consoles to be able to play AAA games over a browser on a mobile device um project x cloud you know the the nvidia GeForce now, whatever it's called. Um, you know, so many companies trying it, I think really interesting. But back to the back to the Phil Spencer tweet about um Call of Duty. I think I would not be surprised to see them go completely exclusive eventually with future Call of Duty franchises. I also would not be surprised to see them say, you know, we actually value uh having a game like Call of Duty be so open as possible that people can play with their friends. I think Call of Duty is one of those things. Now, granted, I have no idea. Is, is Call of Duty crossplay? Do they have cross platform oh, crossplay? You know, uh, I because if they Warzone do, I now? can't imagine them. I think they that do. off of other platforms. Um, because I mean, this is the thing that makes Fortnite Fortnite, right? And I, we've talked about this here on the podcast before. Is having something where you can say, "Hey, man, do you want to play this game?" and not Mm. hey do you want to play this game well hold on are you team blue or team green because if you're team green we can't play yeah or back in the day it was like do you want to play mlb the show oh well sorry i don't have a playstation you know this year i got to play with my good friend zach and uh you know he he booted up his xbox and i booted up my playstation and we were able to play mlb the show (laughs) mlb we're able to play mlb the show uh (laughs) live you know at the same time so i think if yeah. if call of duty has cross play and cross progression i don't think they're going to take it off playstation because there's too much money to be made selling things to play playstation players um and i don't think that those people love call of duty so much they're gonna go well i guess i'm gonna give up on my my whole console just to go to xbox and play uh, call you, of duty i, you I don't, probably underestimate you the call underestimate of duty players there, you but, underestimate call of duty players because there are literally people that's do you the think only people game they play switch their platform yep. loyalties absolutely just for that game absolutely wow. there are people that literally right. call of duty is the only game they play all year round it is the one game they purchase and they play it day and night so if they're on PlayStation right now and they are unable to play it, they will absolutely go buy an Xbox just for Call of Duty. That's how big this is, Dave. But, I mean, the revenue alone, I, what I'm trying to say is like, this is, and it, that's why the purchase was so much is because of how valuable just those game um, IPs and the actual games themselves are to a company yeah. like Microsoft. I guess that's true. I guess that's so, true. So uh, um, to, to, to continue here's, on with Here's this. the other crazy thought. Okay. What if... You could get Game Pass through Project X Cloud. You can for your PlayStation. Well, that yes, we don't have that yet. 
I mean, that's just what, that's if, what if you could use pass. your PlayStation to what play Xbox just, games? What if you just paying got game Xbox the money on Xbox or PlayStation? <laughs> Who knows if that'll be the future? Know. But anyway, listen, listen to this. Tell quote. me about Stadia. Well, so here's here's what Phil Spencer said, and it's why they acquired Activision Blizzard. Uh, it was in a very long interview with the Washington Post. Um, I'm going to go in and then I'll tell which part's the actual quote. So Spencer said he's concerned about tech companies unfamiliar with the gaming industry barging into their space as opposed to the current experience competition against Nintendo and Sony. And quote, Spencer says, they have a long history in video games. Nintendo is not going to do anything that damages gaming in the long run because that's the business they're in. Sony is the same and I trust them. Valve's the same way. When we look at the other big tech competitors from Microsoft, Google has search and Chrome, Amazon has shopping, Facebook has social, all these large scale consumer businesses. The discussion we've had internally where those things are important to those other tech companies for how many consumers they reach, gaming is that for us. I think we do have a unique point of view, which is not about how everything has to run on a single device or platform. That's been the real turning point for us looking at gaming as a consumer opportunity that could have similar impact on Microsoft that some of those other scale consumer businesses do for the other big tech competitors. And it's been great to see the support we've had from the company and the board. Um, So what some people have said that to look at is some of those companies may have been sniffing around Activision Blizzard, your Amazons, your Googles, your uh what, what was the th- i mean you could throw apple in there honestly too i don't know if they're looking but um facebook obviously with the metaverse um he's worried and microsoft is worried if we bring in more competition <laughs> outside competition that doesn't know what they're doing could they damage the gaming industry um i.e you know amazon right now with luna obviously they could be looking at it Google with Stadia, I have no idea what they're doing. I don't know if they actually thought about purchasing Activision or Blizzard um, to help out, especially when they just got out of making games when they closed their gaming studio down. Uh, But the idea is that Phil Spencer is saying that he's fine with where things are at with with Nintendo and Sony, and he's not looking to like destroy them and blow them out of the water, i.e. like the 90s console wars between Sega and Nintendo. No, he's just worried about these other companies coming in and messing up the good thing that is going on with gaming right now. So your thoughts on hearing those quotes and what do you think that means or what he was trying to say? Yeah, I I think when I what I hear him saying is, is, look, we've got this way of doing games, right, which is both the you buy a console and then you buy a game for the console and you buy a console and you buy a subscription for the console. What we're trying to, what I hear him saying is they're trying to defend against the console-less game sellers that are trying to enter into this space, right? Amazon Luna, who's saying, we're going to give you a subscription and we're just going to sell you a game. You don't even need a console or the Google Stadia, right? You don't need a, con- you don't need a console. You don't even need a subscription, right? So Stadia, as I understand it, is either you subscribe for their premium and you get a bunch of games for free, or you can just literally go in with a free Stadia account, spend 60 bucks, you get the game and you can play the game on Stadia in not 4K, you know, you can only play in like 720 for free, but still you could go in and you could play whatever game without having to buy a console, right? And so I I think in some ways they see Stadia and Luna probably as bigger competitors to the gaming space and disruptors to the gaming space and so it's their way of saying, no, 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 get out of here. Like we, we got this thing that we do and we want to just, we want to be the umbrella of protection for these smaller gaming companies against these big, huge tech giants coming in and messing up games with their, uh, with their data sales, right. The, that you're going to make my call of duty about advertising, or you're going to make my grand theft auto about you know whatever i do in grand theft auto suddenly i'm going to get an advertisement for you know if i go shopping for boots in in grand theft auto you're going to try to sell me boots on amazon because you noticed that i was shopping for boots in gta who who knows exactly where he's going for that but i still think it's an interesting question to say what is it that xbox sees as a threat from stadia and luna and and it could very well be when Stadia closed up their 
uh, gaming studios that they said, all right, fine, we're going to close up our studios and maybe we'll acquire some other studios. Yep. I mean, if, if Stadia could have gotten uh, Activision Blizzard, we'd be having a whole different conversation right now. Oh, could you imagine if, <laughs> if, if Stadia, which by the way, uh, you know, the feature with Stadia, the, the free Stadia is running, it's working, it's, I guess, pretty good, people say. Uh, on top of that, you know, the ability to, to click on something and immediately jump into a game is there. Could you imagine like advertising Call of Duty Warzone and you just being able to click on your browser and play Call of Duty Warzone just like like that? I mean, the things that Stadia promised when they launched, if they delivered on those things, they would be game changers. The problem mm-hmm. was they said, look at what we can do. But by the way, it's not here yet. I mean, the ability to say I want to launch straight right now from my YouTube video I want to launch right into that person's game in that exact level, in that exact scenario. And I want to play through that level. Yep. Right. The ability for game streamers to stream a full 4k feed straight to YouTube. uh, I mean, that was the thing that my buddy was saying was the, you know, the running joke of, you know, what is it going to take on Twitch, you know, and, and is YouTube going to, or is Google going to develop their own game streaming service? And my buddy was like, well, yeah, we've, we've got this thing. <laughs> we've got a really good idea for like a game streaming thing. Co- it's called YouTube, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but they haven't capitalized on it. So, and of course, Amazon owns Twitch. So they've got a vested interest over there, which are two spaces right between YouTube and Twitch with the streaming space. Microsoft doesn't really have. I mean, nobody's no, watching clo- game streaming on, on Bing videos. They, well, they closed down their, I know their streaming service. <laughs> I mean, you remember they did have a streaming service. Microsoft did. I guess, I guess they it, did. It yeah. shut down. Um, well, but my other side to this is though, too, is, I mean, Microsoft is doing this. They're, they're putting together X cloud. It is slowly coming together. It is slowly becoming a bigger and bigger platform as they go. They did not come out from the get go and promise like the greatest thing. They said it's going to be a process and it's going to slowly happen. You know, they cater to expectations of gamers of like, if you want great gaming, buy an Xbox. If you want the chance to look in the future and potentially not have to buy an Xbox, X Cloud could be your solution in the coming years as we figure what it is and how it works. Um, I mean, for me, it was just, you know, I, I think that they were just worried about what that would look like. You know, I, I feel like companies like Amazon and Google, if they were to acquire an Activision Blizzard, you would see them really lock that down and force you to very specific platforms for very specific um, reasoning and, and all that. Although, you know, I'm sure they'll eventually end up doing that to get their money back as far as the purchase goes. So pushing people towards PC or uh, the Xbox. But you know, I'm I'm very interested to see what happens. I'm interested to see if they get any pushback. Um, I have a feeling they won't, because um, no offense, and I'll make a political statement here of, you know, I think politics are pretty corrupt, and I don't think that the people are going to really fight this acquisition because a lot of people in politics own pieces of Microsoft um, in the stock market. So they have a vested interest to not stop this from going through, which is unfortunate. <laughs> oh excuse me so yeah i think it'll go through just fine it'll be about a little over a year when it does you know i am interested to see are we going to get a world of warcraft on xbox like are we going to get a console version of world of warcraft that could be something huge you know what are all the games well, that or yeah. imagine this for just a second imagine that just by having a game pass subscription you get access to world of warcraft mm-hmm I mean, maybe that's part part of their plan too, is say, what if we could just give away everybody that's got Game Pass Ultimate can just, can just go play World of Warcraft. And and maybe we just like reinvigorate this thing with a few million, you know, because it's down to like, I think it was at like 20 million uh, active players at one point. It's down to like a couple million active players. Uh, which is still nothing to shake a stick at. Yeah, it's still still a huge community. I, I would say Stadia would love to have those kind of numbers for a month let alone on at one yeah. time. Not that, you know, we're <laughs> taking a shot at Stadia. Both of Stadia's active users are really, <laughs> really solid. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the other thing to, to just, you know, I wonder with such big companies playing in this sandbox of what is the, the future here? You know, Sony's got a really good strategy. Nintendo's got a really good strategy. Sony says, 
We're going to make really good games. We're going to make great single player experiences. Nintendo says we're going to make great family experiences. Microsoft's like, we got billions of dollars. We're just going to buy everything. I have no idea what, what's going to happen there. Um, but, you know, somebody in one of the, the chats, it was really funny. I was someplace and the, this person was chatting. And they said, you know, well, Sony is a way bigger company than Microsoft. <laughs> so, <laughs> said, you know, Microsoft, Microsoft's total valuation is two point two trillion dollars like, yes like well, we're, not, we're not talking billions and there's a reason you know that microsoft was able to buy activision blizzard with cash like that was cash, another thing right. that people like forget or don't realize when we talk about this acquisition it made it made headway and and it made headlines in the finance world because nobody does a purchase like that in cash most of the time it's like stock options and and payments and all sorts of things Microsoft has so much cash on hand, they can throw out 68 million or billion to purchase it like it's nothing. That's ridiculous. Now, what I will say is we just look at the the gaming uh, divisions of Microsoft and Sony. Yes, uh, PlayStation's gaming division does generate more revenue than Xbox. Um, That's a given. But the fact is that Microsoft also has a company behind it that is generating so much money that they're able to do things like this whereas sony unfortunately really the gaming side of things um is what makes up a majority of their revenue obviously the second thing being their movie division um which you know makes pretty decent money when you've got spider-man making a billion dollars uh but like i said gaming straight up yes uh sony does make more but overall as companies and who's backing them microsoft has so much money it is literally play money to them and they can do whatever they want with it so that's why something like this can happen so I, i'm, I'm I interested an estimate to here that says uh estimated that sony just playstation division yep. has a worth of about 45 billion okay so like microsoft could have bought playstation correct if it was Correct. for sale. Well, okay. That, <laughs> Instead that, of Activision. <laughs> that brings me to another thought that we've talked about that we haven't really like delved into, which was the idea of, well, why didn't Microsoft buy all these other companies that were available? Like there are so many companies that are less, they could have bought like six of them for the price of this. Uh, part of that, and they did discuss this, was the fact that with all the issues that Activision and Blizzard were going through, they were looking to sell. Just because a, a company has enough money um, doesn't mean that they actually go and do it. If you guys go back and watch the Xbox documentary on YouTube, they actually talk about this. So before Xbox came to life, uh, Xbox actually had a meeting with Nintendo to buy them. They sat down with Nintendo executives to purchase Nintendo outright so that they could get into the gaming sphere. And guess what? Nintendo laughed them out the door. And that was actually what made Bill Gates want to create the Xbox and create a gaming division was because he got pissed off at Nintendo. And that led to all of this. But the point is, they can't just walk into some place and say, purchase it. Everyone's like, okay, Sony should go purchase Take-Two. Sony should go purchase Konami. Ko- Sony should go purchase, you know, Kojima. The thing is that the companies actually have to want to sell for you to actually purchase them, even if you have enough money. It's not like you just walk up to someone's house and say, hey, David, buy, I'll buy your house. Now, if, if somebody gave David a million dollars, I'm sure he would say, yes, I will sell my house, but he will just go buy another house with that money. Um, that's not how it would work with the gaming company, because obviously if, you know, Kojima sold, it's not like he's going to turn around and go buy another company. He can't do that or start another company. He can't do that. So uh, be interesting to see if we do see anything from from Sony. I'm wondering if we will see, you know, kind of, I know we have the rumor about um, Spartacus, which is Sony's answer to Game Pass and what that's going to look like. But right now, I mean, this is this is big deal. Game Pass is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm just waiting for Microsoft to pull the plug and say, well, now it's going to be, you know, $30 a month for Game Pass because uh, somebody, I, I was listening to another podcast and they talked about how they've done the math on how much uh, Microsoft, how many subscribers Microsoft needs in order to, I think, uh, break even on Game Pass. Um, and it was, I believe, I, I want, I don't know if it was 100 million. Subs- I think it was, yes, it was. 
is 100 million subscribers. They're right now at 24 million. So they have to get to 100 million subscribers to break even with what they're doing. So I think that's their goal. I think that's what they're trying to do out of all this is, okay, let's just world domination with Game Pass and make enough money. Um, but the thing is, they can do this because of Microsoft backing them. That's, that's just, that's the way it is. That's, that's why we're here. That's why this is happening. It's because of how big Microsoft is. Yeah. So I'm going to recommend uh, for the sake of time, since we're recording this live and we've got to jump over to our Monday night discord chat uh, that we come back and record a part two. Uh, we were going to talk a little bit about the question of conglomeration and uh, is it good to have huge companies coming together? Is it not good? Uh, and how does that affect the church? I mean, we've seen the church kind of come together in a cohesive conglomerative fashion. And we've also seen the church just kind of exist as smaller independent churches. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to actually recommend that we just uh, stop here. We're going to upload this podcast and then join us probably very soon. We will get back and record part two, which will be the carry on to uh, is conglomeration and monopolization a good thing or bad thing? Uh, and how does that affect the church? So Russ, any closing thoughts before I hit our music and close us out? No, I think go ahead and hit that. We'll uh, see you guys later. Make sure you join us uh, again in two weeks uh, on a Monday uh, if you guys want to um, hear this live again. And also make sure that you check out our podcast when it gets loaded to different services so you can catch the full and entire podcast episode. And of course, make sure you check us out at crossfirecast.com or churchforgamers.com where you can find out where you can see all the different community interactions with us. Okay. That's it for us. Thank you guys. Have a great night and we will talk to you guys later.